Hi, I'm Mike Bellevue, and today I'm at the West Shore Sportsman's Association. I was going to be at Duelist End today, but the weather forecast was for cloudy and dry, and they got it half right. It's been cloudy and, and showery, so I need the, uh, the overhead. But today what we're doing is we're going to be testing smoothbore loads. And uh, to be honest with you, I don't know if I can get a good video out of this or not. I wasn't going to video it. I'm doing this for a magazine article. But a couple of people asked me to shoot video, so I'll try to get an interesting video out of it. So let me show you what we're doing. So here's what we're going to be doing today, basically. We're going to be using my, uh, my 20 gauge Fusée de Chasse. And what I'm going to be testing it with are 3F and 2FG powders to see if there's really any, any difference. Uh, and we're going to be testing both bare balls wadded with tow, like this, and we're going to be testing patch balls uh, with these goatskin patches. So, got a lot of shooting to get through. We're going to be shooting at 50 yards, and I'll be chronographing it all. Uh, I'm using 50 yards because, you know, if you shoot at 25 yards, everything groups okay. You really can't get any indication of how things are doing until you get to 50 and beyond. And since this is a smooth bore, I think 50 is as far as I'm going to push it for this test. So, going to get loaded up and get going. All right, so here's my bare ball loading procedure. Powder. I'm loading 70 grains of 3F right now. Sorry, I got a bee trying to eat my leg. All right, so 70 grains, 3FG. down the hatch. Taking a little ball of tow, which is unspun flax fibers. Taking a 61 caliber round ball. Pop that on there. Another ball of tow. Ramrod. And let's shoot it. All right, so these are our bare ball 2FG groups. And down here, we've got the 60 grain and 80 grain groups. Uh, and then the 100 grain groups and, and all of that you know, it's not that different. I mean, we range from a biggest group, 80 grains, 8 inches, down to 60 grains, uh, which was only 6.5 inches, and 100 grains was 7. But the 110 grain group was 3.5 inches, and of course, it's printing much closer to the point of aim at 50 yards. So this has been my bare ball group for quite a while now, and it's proved to still be the, the most effective. All right, so we know how we do with uh, with 2F and bare ball, so time to see how 3F performs. All right, I kind of messed up drawing on this target. This is the bare ball target for 3FG Go X. And the best group I got is actually an 80 grain group, which is right here. It's uh, just about three inches. So, all right, to put it into more of a tabular format for you so you can see exactly how things laid out, these are the bare round ball results from the test with both 2F and 3F. And uh, overall, they were really pretty similar. Uh, and, and you're going to see that 110 grains of 2FG and 80 grains of 3FG gave about the same group size and about the uh, the same velocity. So those are pretty comparable loads and, and it happens to be the load that this gun likes. Uh, when I went up again another 10 grains I got a crappy group. So kind of surprising that uh, smoothbore seems to have an actual defined sweet spot. And you know, these are the results for this gun. Now, like I, I always say, this is a particular gun on a particular day fired by a particular shooter. 
and smooth bores can vary quite a bit, but I'm, I'm going to tell you right now that I've had two 20 gauge smooth bores. Uh, and they were by different makers, had different brands of barrels on them, and different configurations. And yet, both of them exhibited the exact same results here. The only difference is that my other smooth bore couldn't really handle a 61 caliber ball. It needed a 60 caliber ball. <clears throat> 61 caliber got too tight when it was fouled. This one handles a 61 caliber ball just fine. But... They both preferred that 110 grain bare ball load. So that's uh, that's what it looks like. Okay, well, we're back here at the West Shore Sportsman's Association for part two of this test. And, uh, you know, we finished up the bare ball portion of the test. That's a ball with no patch, just wadding. And today we're going to be testing patched balls with the same powder charges that we use for the bare balls, which as you'll recall, are the most popular powder charges off of that survey. So, let's show you the setup. Well, just like before, I'm going to be shooting my 20 gauge fusil de chasse, and I'm going to be chronographing all the shots, and uh, as you can see, the target's out 50 yards out, because you can wrap a rock and a leaf and shoot good groups at 25 yards, so 50 yards gives us a, a much better indication of whether or not we've got a good load. So that's where we're going to be shooting. And here's what we're going to be shooting. We're going to be using GoX powder. Uh, we'll start off with 2FG, do those loads, and then we'll move to 3FG. And we're going to be shooting round balls, and I'm shooting 595, 0.595 inches diameter round balls which will be a good tight fit. And uh, if for some reason that doesn't do well, then we, we can move to 0.58, which I also brought along. For patching, I'm going to be using split goat skin. And uh, this is about um, 0 0.015 inches thick. I like using it with a tight ball like this because it, it gives you a little bit more compressibility. So you can use a tighter ball. And I've got plenty of it. And we're lubing with pure lamb's tallow. And uh, as you can see, I'm using pre-cut patches. I've got a punch uh, that I had made that knocks these things out. So, that's the game. Round balls. And patches. Let's see how they do. We're going to start off with uh, 60 grains, and if you recall from the our previous little episode, I've got kind of a, a little spreadsheet here. So 2FG is going to be 60 grains, 80 grains, 100 grains, and then 110 grains with the patch ball. And then we'll move to 3FG with 60, 70, 80, and 90, and those were the most popular loads on the survey for uh, for uh, 20 gauge. So let's get started. Okay, loading technique is pretty straightforward. I've got an adjustable powder measure, which I've set for 60 grains. I'm going to take 60 grains of 2FG and just pour it in. Pour that in the barrel. Take a grease patch, pop it over the muzzle, take the cast round balls, get the sprue up to the extent I can. Just gonna get it started with my, my thumb and then I'll send it home. Oh, that is a good tight fit. There we go. Okay, now I'll put on some air protection and we'll start the test. Well, this is just my free tip for the day. If you do leather work and you've got daubers that you use for dye, uh, and you're wondering what to do with them after they're all used up? Well, what I do is I make vent picks out of them. 
So this particular one, which I've got on a lanyard, is one that I use if I'm in a match or, or doing a lot of work from the firing line as opposed to being out in the woods loading here and there because it's a lot handier to get to here. So I, I just braided up this lanyard for it. But these daubers, they, uh, they go into the vent holes on most guns. Absolutely beautiful, just the right size. I just put a little little bit of a point on them, not a needle point, but enough to to bowl through any caked on powder. And you know, all you have to do is, is cut off the dauber and kind of crimp the end over, and you can you can put fancy endings on them, uh, and then mount them wherever you want. And if you do as much leather work as I do, you end up with a lot of daubers around, so it's kind of handy. Well, here's the results with two FG powder and patch balls, and those are the uh, 0.595 inch patch balls. First group, 60 grains, about a four inch group, couple close together, one spread out. Next group of 80 grains, three inch group, two of them quite close together. This, this actually goes to the 110 grain group. And one over here, this, this was the best overall group of the day. We go to 100 grains, we got a 6 inch spread, but once again, we've got two side by side and then one pulled out here, and that's probably a function of not having a rear sight. I'm just not being as consistent as I could be. We should probably shoot a 10 shot group, because with 110 grain, we put two right close together and then one way the hell down here. So, or way the heck down here, sorry. Uh, but the sweet spot, obviously, is between 80 and, and 100 grains with uh, the 595 2FG. Now, at 100 grains and 110 grains, the recoil was pretty vicious. In fact, the gun was twisting on the rest, which is probably why I'm out over here with the 110. Uh, even 80 grains with the patch balls was pretty darn heavy, whereas with bare balls, 80 grains is an extremely pleasant load to shoot. It's just not as accurate as it could be. All right, this is the uh, the 3FG patch ball target, and I've got to say it is incredibly disappointing. I mean, the groups are terrible, except for the 90 grain group, and, and even that was like five inches, five and a half inches. I got a lot of vertical stringing. I got a 60 grain group that uh, was not awful, but I'll tell you, it was nothing to write home about either. It's about an 8 inch group. You can see it right here. Uh, so, like I say, 90 is the best. Now, I'm thinking that maybe 595 is just too tight a ball. So, I think I'm going to try a couple of powder charges with a smaller ball. We'll see how that goes. Okay, so I stepped it down to a .580 ball patched with that same goat skin. And I gotta say, the results were not really great, as you can see. They were about the same as, as it was with the 595 ball, a pretty big group, until I decided to treat the 580 patched ball the same way I treat my bear ball. And I loaded it with a 110 grain charge of 2F, as you can see, I got the same kind of group that I get with the bear ball, three inch group, which is the best patch ball group I got of the day. Uh, so, on the whole, I think I may be sticking with my 110 grain 2F bear ball load. So, here are the patch ball results. And uh, I've got to tell you, I was very surprised. I expected overall the patch balls to shoot more accurately with a lot of different powder charges compared to the bare balls. Um, because you're taking off all possibility of that ball rattling down the bore. I mean, the patch forms a gasket that aligns it to the bore. Uh, you would think that there'd be a lot of accurate loads. And in fact, the conventional wisdom is that patched round balls are the most accurate way to shoot a smooth bore. And, you know, at least from this test, I'm not seeing that. What I'm seeing is a couple of specific loads that do well. Uh, in, in the case of the tight ball and patch combination, 
80 grains of 2F uh, did as well as anything. Three inches. Three inches is the best group that I can seem to muster in any way I shoot this thing. Uh, and, you know, 60 grains gave us a four inch group. So the one thing you can say about the tight patch balls is that they will shoot the lower powder charges better than a bare ball does. Uh, the real tight patch ball. And then again, when we go to the looser patch ball, in order to get accuracy, we're back up uh, to 110 grains. So, you know, that uh, that is just what it is. All right, so here are the best loads from the test. Uh, three out of the four of them were 2FG powders, not 3FG powders. They mostly fell, three out of the four, again, fell pretty much in the same velocity range. So it tells me that this gun at least likes a specific velocity, uh, a specific amount of power pushing out to group well. Um, you can get the same results with patch balls or bear balls, but you don't really do better with patch balls. So it seems like if you find which way your gun likes to shoot, you can do pretty well, which, which tells me for ease of loading that bear ball is probably the way to go. At least it's going to be the way to go for me. And you know, so some of this kind of defies the conventional wisdom. Like I said, I expected a lot of good patch ball loads, and I didn't get them. I got a, a specific load for each size ball that shot well, and that was it. Uh, and with bare ball, essentially using 2F and 3F, there's no difference if you're throwing about the same velocity. Now, the only difference with that is you're going to get much lower pressures for that velocity with 2F. So why not use a 2F is, is my view. You get a, you know, a little more fouling with a 3F, but uh, I think the lower pressure makes it worth it.